Look at, look at this guy that was asking for Oh no. Okay, moving on. Here's Max. Awesome. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Max Schultz. I'm out of Boston. Um, and I just happened to be down here, heard about this place, so here I am. Um, and I'm going to do some comedy, and if you're interested, I actually do have some TVs available and business cards next to you. Um, so, little kids are always interesting. That's me, yes. Take it if you want. I did. I used to. I shaved it like right after that photo was taken. Actually, was it taken like eight or nine months ago? No, it was taken two months ago. Maybe. I don't know. I'm ballparking it. But anyway, you're like 13. No, I'm 20. Um. So anyways, anyway, I don't tell you that. Uh, anyway, um. So little kids are always ridiculous. Uh, perfect example that is my best friend Tyler. When she was uh, eight or something, also her name is Tyler. That's really cool. I've always thought. Anyways, um, when she was a little kid, she had the Lucky Ducks computer game, which I didn't know existed until much later. Um, but Tyler got creative and decided to edit it and change the letters as like a seven or eight year old and change the first letter of Lucky Ducks to F. And his her mother rather never corrected it, but it read what that would read. Um, so it's Funky Dog, uh, which is a whole different game, but uh, that's all right. Uh, but my sister is 12 years old right now, and a couple of years ago she was at a friend's house and they showed a uh, World War II film. So naturally from that on she was terrified of the Nazis coming and abducting her, not understanding that that has long since been over. Which I suppose, if you're a little kid who has never really gone through a legitimate history course, that's a, a rational fear. However, Zoe is afraid of literally everything in the world. Um, the same fear applied to sharks showing up at the house and abducting her and taking her back to the ocean. And I, I don't know what would happen next, but she would wake up at night either afraid of, of uh, Nazis or of sharks equally, which I always loved. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, yeah, not these guys, um, whatever, same thing, or not, I don't know, um, my, a good friend of mine, Shane's parents are both deaf, um, which normally I wouldn't mention, except I'm going to talk about deaf people, um, yeah, so, uh, the creepiest thing I think one can ever experience is being in the other room, where a collection of deaf people have had a party in the room next to you. So me, Shane, and a couple of friends would hang in the woods and over in the kitchen would be uh, a dozen or so deaf people, so there's no talking. And every five or six minutes, there would just be really eerie bursts of non-coherent laughter that would die down. Um, this would happen often, and it would just startle you, because it would be silent, as though nobody was there. So they're just talking in sign language, and I guess interrupting each other in sign language is one would normally do at a party, but I don't really know how it works. And then laughter breaks out, and it's, it's almost terrifying. So, um, my, uh, what am I, doing? a woman I know that's in a nursing works at a nursing home, and I don't know if this is a federal law or a Massachusetts law, or maybe she just made up the story, but I loved it, so I will relay it to you guys. Apparently, people in nursing homes their room is their property. Like, if they're doing drugs in there, you're not allowed to stop them because it's in their property. You're not supposed to be invaded. It's their house, yeah. Do you get a search warrant? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the same general idea, the, the search warrant idea. So, uh, when she was working there, Penny, when Penny was working there, there was one guy who always was smiling with candy, and she couldn't figure out why this gentleman was also rather special needs. Uh, so 
eventually, it was an everyday thing. She couldn't find out what was going on. She would, the gentleman would walk around, wander into this other guy's room, and about 10 minutes later, leave with treats. And she couldn't figure it out. So eventually, she like creeped in and, and tried to figure out what was happening. And the special needs guy and the man whose room he was going to had an arrangement worked out. He would show up every day at whatever time and reciprocate oral sex to the other man in exchange for things like Twizzlers and Tootsie Rolls every day. And it was totally abusive, but there wasn't a damn thing Tammy could do about it, so she never did. On the subject of that, when I was 16, four of my male friends decided to have a New Year's Eve party. And three of those friends sent the fourth friend down and said, you can't come because we're going to have an orgy. Then they did it. Uh, now, it wasn't a conventional orgy. What it was was in one bedroom, three couples did what one normally does during that event. Uh, and it's, it would go on to be rather legendary. They were 16. Uh, and pulled this off, got their girlfriends to go along with it, uh, and I'm sure everybody involved would be as horrified that I tell people this story, except for the gentleman who hosted the orgy. Um, that used to be the end of the joke until he wrote a better one, which is also true. About three days after the, the orgy took place, I would sleep over at his house, in the bed where most of the activities took place, not knowing what had happened night before. And it was just as company as I remembered. Now that gentleman has a different girlfriend who he's basically married to, and they have a baby. And the three of them live in that bedroom to show that his activity in life has not changed much. Whenever I am far away from him, as I am now, I'm surprised my phone hasn't gone off since, he will Snapchat people pictures of his genitals to kind of induce closeness, I guess. So on Valentine's Day, I woke up to a 15 second video of his girlfriend reciprocating oral sex toward him. He still doesn't see the problem with that, and those are my two blowjob stories. Um, and this is what's kind of become my closer, I guess. So my, the high school version of myself and earlier would be horrified at this. However, as I've grown up, I've come to appreciate country music a little bit, especially, especially country radio because at least in Boston, country radio, you can hear interesting things in there. I don't know if you've ever heard the commercial of the fish trying to seduce a woman, um, and it's all an ad to buy that fish, which I can never remember the, the type of fish, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, it's wonderful, and I hope you all have the pleasure of hearing that radio ad. However, the best thing I've ever heard, I think, on any radio station ever, uh, I was coming through the channels, and it was the tail end of the, of the song. And I can't do a very good country voice, so I'm just going to speak to you the words. But imagine in a very uh, Keith Urban-esque voice, the last two lines of the song read, and I'll be rolling down the street, smoking in the sipping on gin and juice, with my mind on my money, and my money on my mind, and then the song cuts, and I realized two things. One, this is a heavily, I'm Max Schultz, this is a heavily country version of Snoop Dogg's gin and juice, and the second thing I realized was that Snoop Dogg's gin and juice is a very passable country song. That's it for me tonight, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.